The case that we are going to talk about today has caused a lot of people in the United Kingdom to question the credibility of Filipino nurses who work there. People who enter the medical field have this oath to swear upon having the license to legally practice and follow, which is to do no harm. However, one Filipino nurse in the UK did not swear to this oath, who is known to be the so-called angel of death. The Filipino nurse that we will talk about today did not take it to heart and caused a massive issue among nurses, especially in the United Kingdom. The people were divided with a court decision regarding the result of the trial that was done in the UK. Other Filipino nurses are saying that he is innocent and he was just a scapegoat, while others, especially people in the United Kingdom, are saying that he is guilty. Let's go back to the case of this Filipino nurse who shocked the world in the medical field in the United Kingdom, who is known to be Victorino Chua. Victorino was born on October 30, 1965 in Caloocan City in Manila, Philippines. He was one of six children to Juanita and Angel Noblo Chua Sr. His father, Angel, owns a computer business and is known as a womanizer. Besides their family, his father has three other families. As a general manager and owner of his own business, it was not a problem for Angel to support his four families, but what he could not give is his time to spend with them. When Victorino's parents separated, he ended up under the care of his grandmother, while his other siblings went to the care of their other relatives. According to his 13-page letter that was later used in a trial against him, he wrote that when he was just a child, their neighbors and other people were jealous regarding the state of the life uh, that Victorino's family had. But what they don't know is that he hates his parents, especially his father, because he often focuses his attention on his lovers. Victorino and his younger brother Narciso have come under the care of his grandmother and uncle. Victorini only sees his father once or twice a week when he gives them their allowance, while his other siblings, he only sees them when there are occasions like birthdays, Christmas, and New Year. When he entered high school, he learned to drink alcohol, used illegal drugs, and other illegal activities. According to reports, his grandmother did everything to get Victorino to enter the medical field because she wanted him to have a good life. At first, he didn't want to, but it later all changed in 1986. The 21-year-old Victorino witnessed the death of his father when he had a heart attack that killed him instantly. Since his father is the breadwinner of their family, this caused a mental awakening for him, and he realizes that he must graduate so that he can get a good job that will give him a good salary to support his family. He accepted his grandmother's offer and studied to become a nurse at the Metropolitan Medical Center in Mandela. But due to the high tuition fee of the school, that even though he didn't like it, he decided to transfer to the Manila Metropolitan Hospital School of Nursing. Victorino's day would start at 4 a.m. in the morning, and he would bait his grandmother, and then he would go directly straight to school. According to his family, because of the amount of work he does at school, he would always come at home at around 7 o'clock at night. Even though their nursing course is difficult, he had no difficulty making friends with the hospital staff and doctors who have good benefits for their family because they usually get free service from them. Through this, Victorino passed the board exam and he officially became a nurse. He immediately got a job at the Galang Medical Center as a nurse but he is also has other sources of income, such as selling supplements, clothes, and electronic gadgets. Also, it was in the same hospital where he also met his wife, Mary Ann, who is the sister of one of his patients. But one day, he was fired because he was allegedly part of a nurses' union at the hospital. After he lost his job, he entered a different working industry which is buying and selling cars as a salesman. While he was busy with his business, he was offered a nursing position at the Metropolitan Medical Center, immediately accepted. 
This is where he worked for several years, but he was again temporarily fired from his job because some of his colleagues accused Victorino of stealing. According to the victim, Victorino stole his money worth 1,070 pesos, which is about 3,000 pesos at present time value. Victorino strongly denied the allegation from his co-worker and at the same time, he was annoyed because for the fact, his income was not enough due to the hardship and stress caused by his work in the hospital. During that time, his income as a nurse in the Philippines was only 200 pesos per day, which is more than about 600 pesos today, or if converted, it is around $10 per day at present time value. In 1996, he married his girlfriend Mary Ann, and they had two children. As the investigation unfolded at the, the Metropolitan Medical Center, Victorino had an idea of working abroad to other countries, because for him, nothing good would happen if he stayed in the Philippines. Upon searching for a, a new opportunity, he saw an ad from a newspaper that the government of the United Kingdom was looking for foreign nurses from different parts of the world to work in the hospitals there. In 2002, the Metropolitan Medical Center's investigation was dismissed due to lack of strong evidence. In the same year, he immediately applied from the newspaper ad that was hiring nurses for an elderly facility in the UK. He paid a fixer of about 136,000 pesos or about $2,472 to, to take care of his documents going there. And after only for a few weeks, it was during February 2018, together with his wife, Mary Ann, and their two children boarded the plane going to London towards the new chapter of their lives. He immediately got a position at the New Lands Care Homes in Manchester. And after he passed his training, his supervisor immediately recommended to him that he is now eligible to work in any hospital throughout the UK. But before he could finally start to work, he was first asked for legal documents that proved that he had the experience working as a nurse. The documents that Victorino showed were only photocopies and it was discovered that it was also fake. Not only in his document that the anomalies were found, but it was also proven that the people from the hospital he applied would check it had inadequate laws too. It was in 2003 when he became a registered nurse in the UK, after which he was able to work at New Lands Care Home for four years. However, in 2007, he transferred and got a temporary position as a bank nurse for the National Health Service, or NHS. After two years, he then transferred again and got a permanent position at the Stepping Hill Hospital in Manchester, UK. Because of the amount of of experience he had, Victorino's work background as a nurse had a tight resume, so it was not checked thoroughly, and this mistake later led to a controversy, and people in the United Kingdom began to question the credibility of the nurses coming from the Philippines. The Stepping Hill Hospital can be found in Manchester, UK. The hospital has around 800 bed capacity and has about 4,500 employees almost half of which are nurses. When Victorino became an employee of the hospital, he was already 46 years old and had two decades of experience being a nurse. Now, if you look at his resume and documents, he's already an expert in his field. However, according to his co-workers, patients, and even his former supervisor, they disagree about his work ethics. In the recommendation letter from his last supervisor, he said that Victorino is not friendly, and usually his patients don't like him. There is one point when he assigned an old patient under Victorino's care who was being treated for a breathing problem. And according to that patient, Victorino always puts a cream on his butt every night even though he forcefully refused about it. The old patient reported the incident to the hospital, however, the case was dismissed apparently. Another incident that the supervisor remembered is the time when Victorino got into a fight with his patient's daughter by the name of Anne Dodd. 
She complained about Victorino because he refused to give her mother a heart monitor and because of the incident, Victorino was scolded by his supervisor. This angered Victorino, in which after their conversation, he went into an empty room and threw the heart monitor. Apart from the accusations from the patients and their family members, it is also known that his co-workers also seem to have complaints about him. According to them, Victorino likes to forge signatures in order to get the drugs for himself, but allegations were not investigated. It was in 2008 that Victorino became an official citizen in the UK, which helped him to continue working at Stepping Hill Hospital. But behind his successful path upon coming to the UK and having a good life together with his family there, Victorino fell into depression that, according to reports, he attempted to self-treat it with sleeping pills and painkillers that he stole from the hospital's pharmacy. When the hospital discovered what he was doing, he was told to join psychological counseling and was assisted by the Stepping Hills Occupational Health Team. During the counseling therapy, they told Victorino to write all the things that he was feeling about himself, and after their session, Victorino was able to write a 13-page letter which he entitled, The Bitterness Nurse Confession. It was later used by the authorities against him as a confession letter to the crime. Even though his depression got worse already, the occupational health team did not alert Victorino's supervisor about his condition, so he continued with his work routine. His supervisor scheduled him to work in night shifts and was assigned to watch and support patients designated in wards A1 and A3. And all of the patients in these wards are given saline solution. It was in June 2011 when Victorino was allegedly accused of giving a saline solution bag to a young patient while he inserted the hypodermic syringe in it. According to the patients, when they asked Victorino what he was doing, he told them that he only replaces the saline solution, but according to the authorities, what the patients do not know is that the saline solution has already had a mixture of insulin. The mixture of saline solution and insulin is very dangerous for patients who have diabetes because with just a small drop of insulin, this will cause a drop in glucose. If the glucose or sugar level in a person's body suddenly drops, it can lead to a hypoglycemia. In addition, if the glucose remains low for a long time, it can cause unconsciousness and the worst part of this can lead to a comatose. It was reported that the first victim of Victorino was Mrs. Josephine Walls age 72 year old at that time, was admitted in Stepping Hill Hospital on 27th of June 2011 in Ward A3. Mrs. Walsh was under the treatment of COPD or Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. According to reports, she was still conscious and talking when she got admitted to Ward A3. However, when she was transferred to another ward, it was reported that she was already unconscious while in her wheelchair. According to her medical records, Mrs. Walsh was treated twice due to the sudden drop of her sugar level. And because the hospital thought that it was just an ordinary event, it was not furthermore investigated. Suspiciously, after two weeks of the incident, five more patients in Ward A1 had similar symptoms the same as Mrs. Walsh. All of the patients admitted into that ward worsened their condition due to the sudden drop in their glucose level. The nurses and doctors were surprised because most of them had no history of hypoglycemia. Also, one of the five patients is 67-year-old Philip Jones. He was admitted in the hospital because the antibiotic medication prescribed for his skin infection was not effective. And it was during July 10 when Philip was admitted and was transfused by a bag of saline solution. But just less than 10 seconds after the infusion, Philip described that he felt a warm sensation within his body that he immediately got up from bed and attempted to go to the bathroom, but he was unable to do it due to the fact he had already a hard time breathing. 
The nurses immediately attended to him and administered glucose to prevent further damage. According to reports, it was found that there had been five hypoglycemic attacks in one ward in just one night and that was already enough to make the nurses wonder and be suspicious that something is not right. Apparently, on 11th of July, one of the nurses assigned in Ward A3 noticed that one of the saline bags that was supposedly to be administered for a patient looked a bit blurry. They then decided to look the other saline bags in the storage room, and there, they found out that most of it were already leaking because it had holes in it. Because of this, the staff had a fear that all saline bags might have been contaminated. So the hospital immediately decided to change all the saline inventory and to make sure it was safe. They provided a lock in storage room wherein they assigned two nurses to monitor that if someone requested a saline bag for administration, they had to record and sign their request forms. Contaminated saline bags were sent by Stepping Hill Hospital to the Quality Control Department of the NHS. And just a few hours, the results came back and they confirmed that it was, it was mixed with insulin. Also, according to the hospital's internal investigation, within the past four weeks, it was discovered that more than 20 patients were given the saline bags that were classified as contaminated. Unfortunately, Three patients from Ward A1 passed away from the incident. All of the patients involved were tested and found to have a low glucose level. Due to the death of the three patients, the hospital immediately alerted the authorities, which the police deployed 60 detectives on the case. And for added security, they placed armed police officers outside each hospital room and hallways. The nurses were also instructed that they should work with a partner if they will administer drugs to their patients. On the 20th of July, 2011, the police announced that they had already arrested the 27-year-old Rebecca Layton. She was a nurse assigned towards A1 and A3. The authority filed a case against her, but she was only in prison for six weeks because the prosecutor dismissed the case due to the lack of evidence to prove that Leighton is guilty of poisoning and the death of the three patients. On the 30th of December, 2011, more than five months after the issue blew up, Teresa Bailey was rushed to the hospital because she had difficulty breathing. A nurse noticed that the prescription chart regarding the dosages of the drugs were changed. Luckily, if the nurse was not able to notice it, this might have caused a heart attack, stroke, or even damaged the patient's kidneys. On the 12th of January, all the drugs ordered to the patients in Ward A3 were changed. However, they couldn't link this to someone, but they used this to check on a group of nurses who were assigned to Ward A3. And one of the nurses assigned in this ward was Victorino Chua. On 5th of January 2012, Victorino was arrested by the police in his house in Stockport, England. Based on the arrest warrant of the police, they arrested him because he was the one who allegedly changed the drugs in the medication chart of the patients. Apparently, Victorino was temporarily released because all of the evidence against him was circumstantial and had no physical evidence or strong evidence that might prove by the investigators against him. Holding the search warrant, the police searched every corner of Victorino's house. While searching his bedroom, they found a 13-page letter that he had written and entitled The Bitterness Nurse Confession. In this letter, it consists of information on how much he hated his childhood. It is also written in the letter that he does not like his patients as well as his co-workers. According to his letter, most people thought that he was nice but the truth is that he was hiding a dark side. He also called himself the angel of death. When the investigators read the letter, they immediately thought that it was Victorino's confession letter to the crime. So on March 28, 2014, 
Victorino was arrested again and he was officially charged with the murder of three patients who died and in addition, he was also charged with attempting to poison the other patients. During the trial, a Crown prosecutor used the letter he wrote against him and described Victorino as a narcissistic psychopath. The prosecutor also convinced the jury that getting his patients poisoned was his way of taking out his anger on them and also on his co-workers that he mentioned in the letter. The prosecutor also mentioned an event in which Victorino coerced a patient. According to the patient by the name of Jack Billy, he was admitted to a hospital due to vomiting and because he had a difficulty in breathing and often shouted he had his silent drip off. In connection, Victorino injected insulin to Jack's IV line to shut up the old man. According to Victorino's lawyer that defended him and said that Victorino's alleged confession letter was written in June 2010, one year before the poisoning incident that happened in the hospital. The lawyer said in front of the jury that the letter was part of Victorino's counseling session. He also added that even in the letter, it can be seen that Victorino's state of mind was not stable, so it cannot be used directly against him regarding the poisoning incident. However, the Crown Prosecutor presented their strong evidence. They showed that based on the hospital records, it was documented that Victorino was watching over one of the patients who died from the poisoning incident who showed signs of weakness. They even added that even though the doctor did not order to check the glucose level taken, Victorino still managed to get the reading of the patient. It is known that according to hospital protocol, when the patient's glucose sample is taken, it must be discarded after the reading. But Victorino did not throw away the reading, but he hid the sample taken because it was found in the storage room. Once they had done a test, the results showed that there was glucose present and because it was not part of the medication ordered by the doctor to administer to that specific patient, this gave strong evidence against Victorino. Because of the big issue that happened to Victorino, Filipinos in the UK accused a publishing company for treating the case unfairly because Victorino's race was Filipino. They rushed in front of the office of the publishing company because it was published in an article asking why is the NHS still hiring Filipino nurses in the UK. After the protests, it negatively impacted the image of Filipino nurses in the UK when a report came out that regarding Victorino's diplomas and requirements that he used for his application in the UK was a fraud. Not only did he graduate from one of the lowest schools in the Philippines, but Victorino also lacked the credentials to get a job as a nurse in the UK. According to the investigators from the UK who came to the Philippines to investigate Victorino's background, they found out that two of his nursing certificates must be fake or one of them is a fraud copy. They added that Victorino did not take his final exam. Also, one of the requirements of his school in the Philippines was to take a photo of every student who took the exam and they discovered that the man in the photo named Victorino Chua did not resemble him. So the investigators presumed that Victorino may have paid someone else to take the Philippine nursing board exam so that he could pass. It was in May 2015. After three months of trial, it took the jury around 11 days to come out to an agreement with their verdict. The jury convicted Victorino guilty for two counts of murder, 22 counts of attempted bodily harm, 7 attempts of administering poison, and 1 count of administering poison that led Victorino to be sentenced to lifetime imprisonment in the UK. The Department of the Stepping Hill Hospital received criticism for neglecting to check Victorino's credentials. And because of this, the Chief Financial Officer of the hospital made a public apology and said that they have tightened their process. He said that those who are applying from other countries need to present their original documents and as well as undergo a face-to-face -face interview and must take two tests before they can become an officially registered nurse in the UK. 
According to a report published in 2015, the nurse Rebecca Layton, who was first accused of the poisoning incident, now works in a nursing home. She no longer uses Facebook because of the criticism she received from the people, and because of what happened, she sued the Greater Manchester Police for £100,000, and she won. The judge ordered that they pay her £8,000, and also the expenses she spent on hiring lawyers for the case of £45,000, which should also be paid. In June 2015, Victorino's lawyer filed a petition to appeal for a lower sentence, but after a year after they filed it, it was denied by the judge. As of this recording, Victorino is still denying that he is guilty of what happened. In his last words, he said that he is innocent. According to his fellow Filipino nurses in the UK, his mother, and other people who know all the details regarding his case, says that Victorino is innocent as there were no fingerprints found and also no actual CCTV footage to prove that he was the one who tampered with the holes in the saline solution bags. Even other people are still questioning if the law in the UK had been fair to his trial. Victorino's mother, Juanita, passed away due to her cancer in April 2017. And because I want to know what is the update about Victorino's family in the UK after he was imprisoned, I saw a post from his sibling on Facebook about six years ago. I don't know if this is still the same situation, but according to his sibling, Victorino's family could not visit him in prison because of the threats they received from the social workers. According to her, Victorino's wife is afraid due to the fact that the NSPCC or the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children might take their children away from her. <laughs>